corner, weighing in at 240 pixels, the Hylian hero, everybody's favorite elf, the legendary Link! And in this corner, weighing in at 330 pixels, Mario! Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Drop your controllers and click the green flag, everybody, because we've taken the most epic battle in video game history, Super Smash Brothers, and turned it into an amazing new two-player scratch game. Learn coding with Chromeworks instructor Ben Tate as he walks you step-by-step step through all the instructions you'll need to build this game yourself. We're going to be building this project using Scratch, a fun and free coding system that makes it easy for you to build your own video games. You should start by downloading our starter file. It has all the graphics and sound effects that you'll need to build this really cool project. You can find the link in the description down below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see even more amazing Scratch tutorials. Now put up your dukes! It's time for the ultimate battle. Okay guys, now it's actually time to start coding. So first thing we're gonna do today, we're just gonna code Link. We're gonna get him moving. We're gonna get him attacking. We're gonna get him doing all kinds of fancy stuff. So before we actually start coding, make sure you download the starter file by going to the Chromeworks website, then going under lessons, and then clicking download the starter file for the Smash Bros game. So once you guys hopefully have that downloaded, it's time to start implementing the code. First things first, we're going to go down to the link sprite down at the bottom here. So just above my face, there's a link sprite over there. We're going to grab this guy and we're going to start coding in here first. So uh, we're going to start off just a little temporary block of code here. Seeing as we haven't coded the menu, we don't actually know who the character, who the player wants to be. So we're just going to hard code it. So now the, the player one will always be link and then player two can be Kirby. I don't know, whoever we want. So when green flag is clicked, set rotation style to left and right so that he doesn't go all weird. We're gonna set P1 select, so this is who player one wants to be. And we're gonna set it to one. So one is Link, two is Kirby, three is Pikachu, four Bowser, and five is Mario. So each sprite has their own number, shall we say, and that number corresponds to this variable here. Then we have player two select, so who player two wants to be. And player two for now is just gonna be two, which is Kirby. And then we're just gonna broadcast play. So, we had that little bit. Again, this is only temporary, just for now. Uh, we're gonna zoom out, and we're gonna grab when we receive play. So, when we broadcast the play, where we're gonna start playing, we're gonna start implementing all of our code. So we're just gonna stop all other scripts, just make sure nothing else is going on. We're gonna set size to 230%. So that's for link. Link, we're gonna set to 230. That gives them like a good size. And then we're gonna use a loop here. So we're gonna see if player one select equals one, or if player two select equals one. So what these do is it makes sure it's detecting whether any of our players, so whether the players have selected link. And remember link is one, so if player one select equals one or player two select equals one, that means they have selected link. And it can only be one of them, only one person can be link at a time. So let's zoom out. So if, if player one is link, then we're gonna implement this code over here, which you'll notice is the exact same that we're gonna implement down here. So we're just gonna point in direction 90 degrees, or in the other case, uh, negative 90 degrees. So it'll be over here, and he'll point the other way if he's player two. We're gonna go to the certain coordinates. We're gonna make sure we set is player one to one. So what this means here, this variable we're gonna use a lot of later on, and all of it, all it's telling us is if it's a one, then we know link is player one. If it's a two, then we know link is player two. So it's gonna help us later on when we're setting variables or things like that. We're going to make sure we set player one direction to our current direction, or in this case, player two's direction. And then we're going to show, and then we're going to broadcast start. So we can put that guy in here. Remember, this is for player two, and then this is for player one. And you'll notice a very common theme that happens a lot during this coding is that we have thing for player one, and then almost the exact same for player two down beneath. Okay? So that's one thing that's going to happen a lot. Time to move on to the next part. Okay, now for the next little part, we're just going to go down a little. And if we remember, we broadcasted start up here. So now we're gonna grab when I receive start. 
So this bit of code here inside this forever loop is going to be the main bit that always runs. So we're always running, we're detecting whenever someone say hits spacebar, whenever someone wants to move, whenever someone does anything like that. And just like I said before, this loop right here is the thing we're going to be using a lot of. We're going to make sure we're going to see if we're player one or if we're player two. And that's using the variable we just initialized up here and we did it over here. Okay, so forever we're going to detect that. And then over here we have two almost identical blocks of code. There's a few little differences that I'll mention. Um, but for now, we're just going to cover block one, which is here, and we're just going to cover if we're player one. So all of this guy is going to go oops, in here. So if we're player one, all this bit of code is going to run, which I'll take out here for now. So we're going to set block one, uh, player one's block to zero, so that means they're not blocking right now. And then we're going to check multiple things. We're going to check whether spacebar is pressed, so whether we want to attack, because whenever we hit spacebar, that's an attack. We want to check if we're moving, so if we're using... W A S D, so W is jumping, A D is moving of course, walking, and then S would be to block, and then that's when we want to change the block over here and switch to the costume. But if we're not doing any of that, we also want to switch to link standing. So what if we are moving, for example? We go here, let's say we're attacking, we're gonna start sound attack and attack two. These are just two different sounds. One of them's like a grunting and then the other's like a sword swooshing. So we play both of them sounds. And then we're going to use this animate block, which we're actually going to code right after this. So it's pretty much just going to animate from costume 12 to 22. And then there's another number over here that means one. So this one number, if we input it as a one, it means we're not moving at all. Whereas down below, when we're walking, for example, we input it as zero, which means we are moving so that in our animate block, we'll make sure to move. And then the other thing we are going to make sure we do is we want to point in our directions and we want to set P1 direction to that direction. So if we're ever moving and we click D, we want to make sure we're pointing that direction or whichever way it is, we're gonna make sure we point that direction and then we go that direction. So make sure we do that when we're walking. And then when we're jumping, we're gonna use another custom block, which here, jump slash throw, or I actually got this from somewhere else, actually from Mr. Tomac's toolkit. So you can use this block here and that's just jump through. And then there's also a little adjustment here um, but we'll get into all of that a lot later on. And then the block I had covered. And it's very similar for the other block of code here too. It's almost the exact same thing, exact same animate 12 to 22, all the same thing. Make sure we're setting player two's direction. So you can actually just copy all of this over and just change a few things. It's block player two and block player two here. But apart from that, it's pretty much the same thing. So long as you change all of the controls too, right? So it's L to attack for player two and then we're using the arrow keys instead of WASD. So we have those big guys here. We're gonna chuck this guy for player one, and then we're gonna chuck this big bit of code down for player two. So all of this looks maybe really complicated, but in reality, it's not, it's really easy. So now let's move on to doing some of the animating blocks. Okay, so for the animate block here, that's a custom block I made. We're gonna go from costume one to costume two, and then we also have another variable over here that's gonna help us determine whether we're moving or not. So, before we do anything fancy, this one's really easy. We're gonna see if we're player one, we're gonna set player one attack to one. If not, if we're player two, we're gonna set player two attack to one. Really easy, we're gonna to switch to our costume one, so the first costume, and then we're gonna set cause link, which is link's costume to cause one, okay? Nice and easy, uh, we're gonna use this variable a little later on. Okay, now we have this loop here. We're gonna repeat until costume number equals costume two. So we're always gonna be increasing the costume number that we are, and we're gonna keep going until we're at the final costume. And then here we have a very similar loop from what we always do. We're gonna grab if, if we're player one, we're gonna do a big chunk of code, and then if we're player two, we're gonna do a very similar chunk of code, just a little different. And then at the very end, we're gonna set player one attack to zero or player two attack back to zero. So we're gonna reset player, player attack back to zero. So if player attack is ever a one, we know we're attacking. And then if it's ever a zero, we know we're done. And then last thing, we can switch to costume link standing. So what are we actually doing here? This is more of the animating part. We have two options. We can either be moving or we're not. So let's cover if we are moving. So if move or not equals zero. So if you guys remember back up top, that's the wrong button, here we go. If we are walking, for example, so that's here, we set movement to zero. So that's this variable here. So if it is equal to zero, 
um, then all we're going to do is we're going to set player one attack back to zero because we're not attacking. We're going to go to the next costume and then we're going to move a few steps. And of course that's going to loop, 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 loop. So it's constantly going to move and constantly going to change the costume. Uh, there's one also of the little bit here we can add. If the key space is pressed or W is pressed, we could even add or S key is pressed if we really wanted to. You know what? Let's do it. We'll click add this guy and we'll grab if, if I can find S. There we go. Let me put this guy in here. So if, if W is pressed, S key or spacebar. So that's to jump, to block, to attack. If any of them are pressed while we're in our walking animation, it'll automatically break out. It'll stop the script, stop the animation, and then go on to do the attack. So it's just gonna help us, like it'll help the game run better, it'll make it feel better. It's just an overall good improvement. And then if we're not walking, then we're gonna be attacking. So we're gonna switch to cost link, which was the variable we used over here. So that's the first costume. And then we're gonna have this big dude over here. So we're actually gonna detect whether or not we're actually hitting someone. So first we have to check if player one attack equals one. So if we're currently attacking, I'll kind of get to why this bit is important in a second. And we also have to make sure, of course, that we're touching either Kirby, Bowser, Mario, or Pikachu. So if we're touching our other opponent and our attack equals one, then it'll allow us. But there's also a few other things we have to check. We have to make sure that player two attack equals zero. So you have to make sure that they aren't attacking at the same time. And then if we know that they're not attacking either, then we can set player one attack back to zero because we know we probably hit them. And then the last thing we have to check here is if player two's block equals zero. So that means if they're blocking, oh, sorry, if they're not blocking, so if it equals zero, that means they're not blocking, my bad, then we're gonna broadcast player one hit player two. And that's gonna be something that player two is gonna pick up and then they're gonna do something with it later, which we'll also get onto a little later in case someone hits us. So we have that bit there, we know that's working. Uh, we set player one attack back to zero here so that we only ever hit them once. So let's say Link does his attack, he goes here, he attacks someone, Link could actually hit them multiple times, but we only want that to count once because it's only one attack. So we set it back to zero so long as we hit them, um, and it goes back to zero, that way we don't increase the health from zero to like 100 in a split second. We only want it to go from zero to 10. But speaking of health, we're going to cover that in a little bit. Then the last bit here, this is just a little precaution, in case costume two is greater than costume one, then we're gonna do some other things here. So if costume is less than costume one, that, that means costume one is gonna be bigger than costume two, then instead we're gonna minus our costume each time. Uh, if not, we're just gonna increase it by one, and then back here, we're gonna switch our costume to costume one. So in other words, we're just increasing our costume each time. It's like using the next costume block, same thing. So. We have that working now. We have a very similar bit of code over here. It's just using slightly different things. We're using player two attack. We pretty much reversed all of the variables. So we're setting player two attack to zero. We're checking if L key is pressed or if up arrow is pressed. Or let's do it one more time. If we want, oh, no, uh, this guy over here. And, or if down, where's down? Or if down arrow is pressed. So if any of them are working, and we got all this guy here, blah, blah, blah. And now we can put this guy in there, like so. It's gonna get pretty big. And then we can get this guy over here, and we can put this guy in here if we're player two. So we have this huge hunk of code working now. Um, now we actually have to do something for broadcasting player one hit player two, or in this case down here, player two hit player one, because we're player two in this part, and we're hitting player one. So. If we actually receive any of those things, so every sprite will have this, every every character will have this, and whenever the character receives hit, so whenever any of the characters are hit, we're gonna make sure, for example here, if player two hit player one, we're gonna check if we are player one. If we are player one, then we're gonna go to hit, and then we're gonna run this bit over here. And it's the exact same thing, just opposite over here. So this isn't here, this isn't going for this bit of code here. This is actually for when, say, Kirby runs this bit of code, and then Kirby sends this over. So that's what that's for. Let's say we are hit though. Now we have code that we have to do here to make us damaged and to make us go flying away. Let's do that now. So that's it for part one of this tutorial series. Next week in part two, we'll get our combat system going so we can get our characters actually fighting each other. If you like this project, 
please drop us a like and leave a comment down below. Send some love especially to Ben, our resident Nintendo nut. He coded this game himself and also did the tutorial and we're very proud of him. See you next week.